tell me your name and how long you've been here. My name's Abel Mary. Uh, Regina. Chaz Anthony Graves. Yeah, I lived in this area since 1990. I've been living in this part of DC for six years now. I've been here since 1995 in Southeast, but I've been here in this world since 1983, people. <laughs> Why did you come here originally? Um, well, I used to come here because I had a lot of friends that lived in the neighborhood, and we recently bought a rental property right up the street, so that has caused me to come here a lot more frequently. Uh, it was cheaper on this side. <laughs> Everything is like 2000 3000 and up, and it's just out of my price range. I don't want to make this interview about me, but no, I, no, make I, it. I, I wound up... We had a radio station. I do rap music. I end up, um, once I got some type of celebrity, yeah, yeah. I wind up bringing um, a radio station that's right around this corner that's still there. Oh, if, the, the, Yeah, the We Act Radio. Yeah, that, we are, yeah, yeah, That was my radio station. I wind up having two radio stations. I was doing Howard University Radio and that radio station on Friday nights. And what we basically were doing there was just to let the neighborhood know to where you could come to a radio station if you was a rapper, a singer, a poet, a comedian, you could come and you can get your talent off. And we brought that into Southeast, what, like four years ago. And that radio station is still sustainable. I'm not there anymore, but they're still doing their thing. You like it here? It's beautiful. It's a historic area. It has a lot of soul and character that you're not going to find in other parts of the city. I feel like it could be better, but it's home. If you honestly come right here, my neighbors on both sides of the street and this third one, beautiful. Family. If I got $60 in my pocket and your kids out here, I'll see what I'm going to do. Make it right. I'm going to throw all my money in the air and all your kids <laughs> better collect that $60. Right. And I do this a lot. Not to, not to be bragging, no, but no, 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 no. we're trying to feed each other around here. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my motto. Yeah. What would you change about this neighborhood? Um, I would like it to not change and lose its soul and its character. A lot of times what happens is when the demographics shift, it completely erases the history of the city. So I would like it to still have the same bones that it had, but then also progress as well. So I feel like for the longest, this side of DC has been abandoned. They continuously pull funders from school. They continuously pull things from this area, but they never consistently give back to this area. And for the longest, I feel like this part of DC has just been forgotten about. And they'll continuously do things to have things in DC, but if you pay attention, nothing is ever on this side of town. Until they want to come and renovate and gentrify it, that's when everybody cares. That's when they want to give us a Starbucks. Like, if you really look at this area, we don't have any grocery stores around here except for the one that's up on, what's that, Naylor Road? Yeah. And then the one that's on uh, East Over Shopping Center. There's no stores around here for us. Even when the Walmart came to DC, they were supposed to put it on this side of Anacostia. That didn't happen. Yeah, I would just give this place more funding because honestly, the people here want it. It's not that they don't want to work, it's just they don't have the opportunities like everyone else. And nobody has the transportation or even the funding to get a job, go all the way uptown to that job and still come home to this side of town and still be able to make a living for themselves. It, it's like you're consistently fighting a fight when no one is even realizing you're fighting. The only bus that we really have that will go Uptown, aside from the train station, is this P6 right here. That's it. That's the only way that you can get uptown effectively if you don't get on the train. I just feel personally that a lot of things could be done better. Uh, mm. You know, honestly, just as far as when it comes to Southeast. We done been in poverty. We done been in poverty. What's that thing that we trying to get up out of? Do you have a favorite memory from this neighborhood? Yeah, well, when we first saw the rental property, me and my mom were just driving around to just take a look at it. We hadn't been here in a while. And I just happened to stumble across a property that had a for sale sign on it. And then fast forward two months later, we were closing on it. Oh, wow. Honestly, my favorite memory would be summer times. Summer times in DC are the best, especially on like this part of town. We open up the fire hydrants, the kids come out, we bring the girls out and it's just, it's family, it's fun. It's community, it's people coming together and just caring about others and how they feel and things like that. And just making sure that Everybody knows that they feel included. If one kid out there got an icy pop, everybody out there was getting icy pops. But those will have to be like my favorite memories of like even living on this side of town. Uh, if you look further down the street, you're not gonna be able to see it, but there's a parking lot right here where we used to have on Halloween a uh, trick or trunk. What that was basically is we had different parents or, or people that drove volunteer their cars, they'll put their Halloween costume on and volunteer their car as like a house for trick-or-treating and the kids were able to go to different cars get their candy we put on a rap concert that was free to where if anyone that was walking you could have came so we just try and get back to the community do you know the history of anacostia 
The people that were originally placed here used to live in Georgetown, and because that real estate was became so valuable, this was kind of the area that was given to them, and Frederick Douglass's house is right here as well. So there's like a lot of uh, cultural history here that uh, you don't necessarily find in other parts of the city. I know that before that, this was a predominantly white neighborhood. Berry Farms was all white, and every, everybody, everybody African American lived uptown. The moment that black people were allowed to move on this side of town, everybody left and everybody dispersed. Um, not all the history, but I know one good piece about it. If you walk up that way to Frederick Douglass house right there, yeah. and that's the best piece of history. Mm -hmm. And it's right here in Southeast, not uptown, not Northeast, but it's in Southeast DC mm -hmm. on W Street, the Frederick Douglass house. How would you describe this neighborhood for people who have never been here? Um, it's a really close-knit community. Um, it's physically detached from the from the main part of DC. So you'll run into people that have lived in DC for 20, 30 years and they've never ventured out here. But when they come here, they really get a chance to see a really soulful, uh, culturally significant part of DC. I would describe it as, I don't know, because I feel like if you're outside looking in, you see it as a bad neighborhood. You see it, you see it for all the things that they show you. But when you get around here, you come around here, it's nothing but love, it's nothing but positivity, it's nothing but people looking out for you and people caring about you. So I feel like people just got to come around here and experience for themselves. Everyone's welcome. You go a few years ago, and I'm going to be honest, take my glasses off for this, and you might have only saw my face and my complexion. But guess what happens now? Because we are one, and watch this, you see people that got that same complexion around here too. <laughs> All right, man, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for chatting with me. Appreciate that's it, man. It, man. Hey, well, I appreciate you taking the time to share. No that, problem. That's it. Yeah, that's it, man. Yo, that's I appreciate you, man. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for even letting yeah, me get Yeah, of course, of course. And I heard that over and over and over again. Invest in love. Invest in this community. Invest in the people. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to talk to people here today who have that message and who are able to present that message unfiltered in a way that I, I certainly wouldn't have been able to do. Um, and, I, and I really appreciate it. So thank you, Anacostia. Neighborhood three of 131 neighborhoods in Washington, D.C. Check out my music. My name is Abel Mary. You can uh, find me on IG at Abel Mary, A-B-E-L-M-E-R-I. You can just Google it, all my music will pop up. So I have an EP that just dropped a week ago called BLM. And it's kind of just talking about like all of the stuff that's going on in the news cycles right now with police brutality and the protests. And we shot a really cool video of Black Lives Matter um, Plaza. Um, so, uh, yeah, just check it out. It's really all the stuff, man. Mm -hmm. I, you know I know. You already know I know. Huh? <laughs> Look, see, so you guys still had everybody. <laughs> Yeah, she don't want to be on camera, so I'm gonna. It don't uh, matter. I'm, I'm, the I'm, voice for the people is right here. <laughs> I'm right here. Um, that's a gun inside the mouth. To me, I tell people this is police shooting. If you notice the diamonds, that skull is black. That's police shooting us the way that they do. And this is just a snake hand. They're saying trust no one. <laughs> and you got the roller skate. Oh, and then of course, look, look, everything that represents just my life. <laughs>